An aerial tour of Grand Dam. This is awesome. Right. As planets go, Grand Dame is super dull, but there is no denying she's a beaut. I'd like to give all the initiates a little aerial tour their first time here. That herd is huge! On Earth, in the early part of the 21st century, it was discovered that cows always stand facing the magnetic poles when eating or resting. They do the same here. Really? Does anyone know why? I don't know if anyone knows. I don't. That's the extent of cattle trivia. Over there, that is going to be a statue of me. It's enormous. I'm kind of a big deal. Are there any cow-eating creatures indigenous to Grand Am? Oh, sure. Sorta dogs, for one. Cows are slow, stupid, and delicious. It doesn't take predators long to figure that out. Sorta dogs? As the planet owner and resident deity, I name everything. I got inspired. Me. What are those over there? Around these parts? Looks like a herd of screw this, I'm going to beds. A lot of naming and other deity admin stuff had happened earlier that day. We adjourned after that. Inside the Physics Lab Greetings, Dr. Kane. Forget where the Physics Lab was, or is this your first time having to find it? You know I've been here before. Tardy it is, then. We're all here now, Doctor. Start. The Invictus itself is useless in that it cannot be replicated. The interdimensional drive relies on the flucal currents of a dimensional fissure, and the navigation system is a grotesque parody of a single woman's gift. It failed to come home under its own power because Dr. Kane is a fraud. However, there is no denying that the Invictus has been places and experienced things. Because it was fitted with the latest and best of recording devices, much of what transpired would have been captured and stored, waiting in the memory banks for their taking. An interdimensional portal large enough to let a binary star system pass through was generated. The level of technology and power involved is incomprehensible, but the Invictus had a front row seat, and what it saw, we can see. Leveraging work that I've been doing for the BGO, I was able to concentrate the energy output from a series of Kugelblitz black holes into metaphoric carbon lettuce drills and bore a minute interdimensional portal into the universe where the Invictus found itself marooned. You were creating micro black holes? Intentionally? That's madness. Why? I suppose it must be mystifying to you when someone advances science intentionally. You could have destroyed the entire base. Unlike you, I'm competent. You didn't answer. Why? In order to re-establish the quantum entanglement with the ship's array, it provided a guiding beacon. Elaborate for the living planet upon which the Invictus now resides. A living planet? And how did you know which universe to bore into? I didn't. I began my search using the planned flight path, but that proved futile. You see, Dr. Kane had tested his cobbled together navigator abomination by doing short in and out jaunts through the looking glass. However, that was not truly any sort of test at all. It's like dipping your toe to prepare for whitewater rafting. It didn't touch on the fact that universes shift positions relative to each other. Like a labyrinth of moving walls, sometimes slowly, sometimes cataclysmically. Time itself is not immune from the repercussions, and the many worlds event chains reconfigure. The past suddenly is no longer quite what it was. <laughs> Labyrinth. Too many syllables? How about maze? That thing the Minotaur roams around in. The result being what we experience as the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect. That nonsense. You've reached a new low in your credibility, Doctor. Poor, sad, simple-minded Dr. King. Even the Mayans, some 15,000 years ago, knew of the shifting and the collateral consequence on the many worlds of vent chains. 
What are you babbling about? <laughs> they correctly predicted that the existence they were a part of would be morphed into something slightly different in the 21st century. Smoosh. The world, at least as they knew it, did indeed end. And furthermore, never was. You still have not answered the original question. How do you know where to search? I knew because, as with Fiddlehead, I am attuned to these shifts. You're a navigator? No, Fiddlehead is the real thing. She is a navigator of singular clarity, and with the prodigy herself at my disposal, I was able to greatly confine my search. It sped things up immensely. Am I to understand that you have a multitude of portals bored out of this universe? This lab is a pincushion of micro-portals. You are playing fast and loose with everyone's safety, Rising. You have one lowly doctorate and it's in plagiarism. I get results. Commander Kufer, the results I am offering to get this time are the Invictus and its bounty of data. Weaponizable data. Uh, wouldn't the BGO frown on us, taking their vessel? Technically, it's salvage. Officially, they couldn't do anything about it without rattling a tenuous piece of the now unaligned former colonies. Unofficially, they may be inclined to destroy the vessel rather than let anyone else get their hands on it. The research they were doing was in violation of every promise and treaty they were involved in that, thanks to misinformation propaganda and reactionary public, banned interdimensional research. And you'd navigate it? I'd be there in case I'm required. The Invictus might not be entirely in this universe. That's absurd. Did I not warn you that we were going to have a problem with it? Why is this planet helping you? It's an exchange. The planet wants in to a new universe. This one seems to meet its needs. Why does it want in to a new universe? I don't know. How did the planet contact you? Psionics. It's somehow attuned to the communication array's quantum entanglement. It followed the breadcrumbs to this universe and to me. Of course. You so thoroughly believe I brought about the arrival of the planet that you were going to torture me to find out how? This is how. And why, Doctor, did you wait to tell us? Why the games? To give Fiddlehead a good head start with her escape. I wanted her gone because the planet is aware of both of us. With her out of the picture, it gives me leverage. I'm the closest thing to a navigator that you got if you want that ship moved. So you admit it. You helped her escape. Let's call it a confession, dear. That way your torture posturing could have played a critical role. Is the planet a threat? Unknown. Would it be an asset? I'm purely speculating, but I do see potential. All the more reason to get us there first. Risk versus reward is staggeringly in your favor. The potential payoff is huge, and all that you're risking is a minor vessel, some equipment, and a small handful of people, me along with them. How tempting is that? I'll pack your bag. Too kind, but you really must get out of that lackey mentality. Assemble your crew. In the Temple of Evermore. Is it always this busy at Evermore? There's always some kind of flea market or bazaar happening somewhere in the temple. Between the priestess and the townsfolk, there are lots of tchotchkes to move. Oh, do I smell coffee? Hey, don't wander off. I take it you want something? I do, but everything is on the other side of the counter. I'm waiting for the young woman to finish up and then I'll go over. She'll have something. Oh! Goddess, what would you like? What kind of beans do you have? The coffee kind. Order. It's all awesome. Un café basso? Oh, I speak coffee shop Italian. <laughs> sure.
What's the fastest warp speed a vessel has gone? It seems to me that sometimes people have managed to boldly go warp 10. Then, out of nowhere, sometimes it's never been reached, and people attempt to boldly go where no one has gone for the first time all over again. Huh? I chalk it up to the Mandela effect. It seems to pick on warp 10. Mandela effect? You experience that too? I, I experience it a lot. Things suddenly change, but every indication says it's been that way all along. Mandela effect? What's a Mandela effect? I see what you did there. You'll fit in perfectly. Hello, goddess. This must be Fiddlehead. It is. Fiddlehead, you've already met Bronson and Jane. The woman behind the desk is Priestess Jennifer. The wheels would come off the wagon without this one. Everyone, this is Fiddlehead, in the flesh. Has the universe been paid its pound of flesh? It feels a little flat. Interesting. Perhaps what Mr. Rice and Miss Parker have to say will somehow settle the debt. Debt? Why are we talking debt? There is no debt. And what have they got to do with anything? I was hoping you could tell us all you know about the Invictus. I only ever saw the concept renderings. But the navigation system is based on you? And you built the operating system? Yes. And even though some organization is trying to replicate your knack for interdimensional navigation, they've so far not succeeded? I can't be sure, but that's my understanding. Therefore, besides you and a program replicating you, there is no other means of navigating interdimensionally? No. No as in no other means? Or no as in she's wrong? She's wrong. <clears throat> Can you clarify what you mean? I mean the opposite of, you're right. Who or what else can navigate interdimensionally? The woman who pointed out that I needed to leave Corfu. At least she says she can. This sounds like a long-winded exposition is about to happen. Before we get too far into it, Fiddlehead has been chipped, and we need to get it removed pronto. Chipped like a pet? Yep. Therefore, not only is she on Corfu's kidnap radar, she's also on Petty's hit list. Petty is at best a not-for-profit gone rogue, and at worst an insidiously mad organization. They do fight against animal capping. What in heaven's name is capping? Skull cap neural nets going into the brain as a crude control mechanism. Barbaric. Super interesting sidebar on the capping. So, Petty, it's a concern here on Grand Dam? That's why it's best we handle this sooner rather than later. There's a couple of vets in the town. I am an actual person. Yes, I know. But sometimes those things can be pretty meticulously embedded, intentionally difficult to get to, as well as being dangerously booby-trapped. Booby-trapped? Dangerously? Yes, so they can't be easily removed by dognappers. Veterinarians have the training and the bomb disposal license. Two spring immediately to mind. Ken is the closest. Veterinarians have the what? What Priestess Jennifer is trying to say is that she's going to shut the hell up now, and sure, a medical doctor could be present. Ken is wonderful, and the fingers of his prosthetic hand are particularly adept at this kind of intricate surgery. Why does Ken have a prosthetic hand? While Priestess Jennifer is making arrangements for Fiddlehead's procedure, Perhaps we can resume discussing the task of planning the retrieval at Corfu. I'd like to go. Why? To get my file. Which file? The file about me. Why do you want a file about yourself? Long story short, she doesn't recall her past pre-Corfu. I thought you had that file. I had the hospital file. It was vaporized. Oh, right. I forgot to get my employee, but likely prisoner file. <laughs> Out of the question. She's proven to be weirdly stealthy. And since when are you calling the shots? Super weirdly. You're emphasizing the wrong thing. You should emphasize the skill and not the manner in which you execute it. Super stealthy. You're chipped. It's coming out. What if they recapture you? I'll be with her, the indiscriminate killing machine. Hold on. There's plenty of discrimination. Priestess Alley. This is a pleasant surprise. Please come in. Did I hear correctly that this poor woman is chipped? Like a dog. I'm taking her to Ken. To a veterinarian. Again, like a dog. 
The reason I came to you all is that I have an update. Ezra has been communicating with the planet, and from the planet's take on things, we believe she's on Corfu. Ezra wants us to know and is making it appear as if we sleuthed it out. I don't recall anyone named Ezra. You can't miss her. Bone white skin, white hair, red eyes, super nice, super sharp, straight edge teeth. Brainiac, psychic, Willy Wonka aficionado. Big fangirl of all things early 21st century. Could possibly be a cannibal. Last name Rising. She's several kinds of doctor. Oh, her. You should have led with that. Seriously? Dr. Rising, Ezra, is a little bit on the creepy side, but she's the one who pointed out that I was actually a prisoner. She helped me escape. Very out of character for her. And extremely suspicious. Not suspicious. Alarming. Clearly she has a plan, and that is never good. Something involving the Invictus? Or grander. Priestess Jennifer can tend to getting Fiddlehead to the vet. Goddess, Jing is hoping to meet with you. Right. There was an entropy situation. Mr. Rice, Lieutenant Parker. Perhaps we can move to a meeting space I tend to favor, and discuss making arrangements for your people to set up a temporary base of operations here at Evermore. Certainly. Entering the office of Priestess Alley. Please, make yourselves comfortable. It would be difficult not to. How nice. Very inviting. It is a wonder what a few personal touches can do for the warmth of a meeting space. I fear that with Ezra involved, we may no longer have the luxury of the mission to Corfu. Getting to the Invictus straight away would be the best course of action. Ezra will be after the Invictus? Yes, but perhaps not for the same reasons as the BGO. Not entirely, anyway. What then? Ezra and Leviathan's arrangement. Who is Leviathan and what sort of arrangement? For lack of a better description, Leviathan is a vast demon. A what now? A malevolent being not of this universe, which wants in. From time to time, Ezra helps this being get into this universe piece by piece, and it pays her in knowledge. The interdimensional fissure on the Invictus is an entry point as much as it is an exit. We must show them the video. I agree. Alexandra is the best person for the job to stop it from happening. And the BGO could provide reinforcements. Our impression is that the planet would welcome members of the Coven. However, we don't know how it would react to others. It has a naive definition of life, revolving around whether or not there's a telepathic connection. It senses the Coven as a whole. It does not sense the trillions that make up the colonies. The planet is blind to them? Blind is not the correct analogy. From its perspective, there is nothing that merits being considered life. What about recovery of the Invictus? Not if we can't shake Leviathan loose. Can you negotiate with the planet to have some BGO personnel on the ground to perform a data download? That might have to be taken off the table as well. Must it though? Certainly, it could be secondary priority, but it needn't be removed out of hand. I agree with the lieutenant. If the opportunity presents itself, we recover the ship. If it doesn't, we can do the download. Alexandra can pilot, but what of the ship's navigation? Hasn't that system proven flawed? Yes, but the software can be bypassed by a Neurosync interface. A psionic cap? You mean for a person to use? You are not suggesting little fiddlehead. Why not? It's perfect. She is a member of the Coven, and she is the original navigator. You want her to go into the dark heart of damnation to retrieve a ship? Not just any ship. Bronson and I can show her the video that we have of the Invictus, and all of us can tell her what we know. She would make an informed decision. The BGO would be grateful. In exchange, would they then help her uncover her past? A more than reasonable trade. On Evermore, watching the arrival of Ken. 
Has he ever worked on humans? He is a brilliant veterinarian and exobiologist. That would be a no. Correct. But a people doctor will be coming. Oh, there he is. If you'll excuse me while I get the door. <sighs> Prison was more attentive. There she is. Let me get her up here to see what we can see. She seems healthy, but then I never heard tell of any of you ladies ever getting sick. I can't take any of the credit. She arrived today. What has checking out my gums got to do with anything? Easy, girl. Small breeds can be so high strung. Not around people a lot, huh? Speaking of people, isn't there supposed to be a people doctor here, too? Here, girl. What? Hey! Was that a cow tranquilize? About the people, doctor. Unfortunately, he's off handling a bit of a situation and can't make it. Let me get you a pillow. You have two vets, but one doctor? More cows than people. Prison was nicer. Inside a meeting hall. You appear to have recovered well. Any trouble finding the theater? Thank you. No problems. Great signage. Ali here is very pro-signage. Bronson and Jane have a proposition for you and Alexandra. It starts with a short video. The video is a little troubling. Please have a seat. Priestess Jennifer braided my hair when I was unconscious. Why were you unconscious? The surgery. Anyway, what do you think about the hair thing? She's a fidget braider. I'm not sure about it. It's nice. And it was done without my consent. Does that constitute assault? I could assault you, and then you could compare and judge for yourself. Spark her up, Allie. Let's see this troubling video. Short, but as Priestess Allie said, troubling. That's way different from the concept drawings I saw. Hashtags aren't a thing anymore in the 23rd century, eh? Hashtag fugly? What language are you speaking? We are certain that Dr. Rising is going to leverage the opportunity of the interdimensional fissure aboard the Invictus to try and bring Leviathan into this universe. And you want me to stop her? I'm all in. The BGO is hoping to recover the ship. Or at very least, the data. I can pilot. Not so much. But I'm no computer spurt. In this situation, Fiddlehead might be correct. You might not be able to pilot if the ship is not entirely in this universe and the navigation system is offline. What's the solution, then? <clears throat> Why are you looking at me like that? A possible solution to the conundrum might be at hand. Hold up. You want me to go there? You were going to go to Corfu. Corfu is not possessed. Okay, let's just take a minute to review. With Fiddlehead the one navigational option, you would like the two of us to go into the Hellmouth to A, stop Ezra from bringing Leviathan into this universe, and B, retrieve the Invictus, or, at the very least, its data. And we will be doing this while dealing with the ghost crew on which ordinary weapons may or may not, but likely not, be effective. Also, the current conjecture is that a star was imploded to provide the necessary energy for the Red Dwarf system to pass into this universe. What's that now? There's an orbiting quark star and strange matter residue in the system that suggests the collapse was recent. Are you getting all that in your notes? Mostly. We have a weapon that might be effective against the beings. Prototypes are coming with the team. A ghost-busting weapon? In a manner of speaking, yes. Who are you going to call? About what? Ugh, apparently we're to do all this at the mercy of a planet that can crush stars. On the upside, this has big potential for paying the universe its pound of flesh. No. Accurate situation assessment. Except that it will be the three of us. I will be coming along to do the computer download, if it comes to that. No offense, but you're not on the planet's invite list. 
and Fiddlehead is a computer expert. You're neither needed nor wanted. <laughs> Are you sure about the no offense? It's not throwing shade if it's true. It will be the two of you. I am not going. And seriously, throwing shade? What sort of Creole are you babbling? This century is a real pop culture and idiom dry patch. That would be meeting adjourned. We have the arrival of Initiate Fiddlehead to celebrate. A county fair. Hmm, this is something. It's all for Fiddlehead. All for me? Are there vegan options? No. There's an open table over there. <whistles> Tiff! Come sit with us. I'll introduce you to the new. Oh, I can't stay. I'm here with Ted and the boys. A noob. Fiddlehead, this is Tiffany. Tiff, this is Fiddlehead, the noob. That gal is Lieutenant Jane Parker. You two, this is Tiffany, the all-seeing oracle. Makes a mean apple rhubarb crisp. We go way back. Not so much all-seeing, more like squinting through a keyhole oracle. Fiddlehead is not a Genesis initiate. Hyperspace seems to be her forte. Every member of the Coven is gifted. But not all the gifted will be members of the Coven. Who's the Genesis Initiate? A noob yet to come, whom I believe I saw through the keyhole. While oracling. Assumed. Oracle is not a verb. <whistles> On Grand Am, the word oracle can be used as a verb. That's all. Carry on. Welcome aboard, noob. This group of ladies will always have your back, and you will come to find that you will always have theirs. It grows on you. So far, everyone seems nice. By and large, they are. But not all. A few of these women are terrible human beings. Tiffany! She's not wrong. Real psychopaths. Ruthless, narcissistic. All kinds of nasty, but even those loathsome women will have your back and you theirs. In time, you'll come to find that the coven is a bond like no other. That's so heartwarming and yet quite disturbing. You're a day late and a penny short, Tiffany. Her introduction to the coven was Ezra. Then, noob, the rest will be a piece of cake. <sighs> I should get back. Hey, by chance, do you have a big sword in your goddess arsenal? Kids giving you trouble? I've had a vision. I assumed the sword was a symbol of something, but I had to ask. I wish my brain was more direct when talking to itself. I don't. No dragons, no point. <laughs> Thought as much. All right, see you all later. Pleasure meeting you, noob. Likewise. You need to get to the temple more often. I should. Say hey to your clan from me. Will do. What or who is the Genesis Initiate? Spark of Life. Tiff has seen that there will be an Initiate who fans the Spark of Life. No matter how slim the odds, if there is a chance, it will happen around this Genesis Initiate. At least, that's Tiff's best interpretation of what she glimpses through the keyhole. Hmph, that's a trick. Ain't it? That trick is somehow linked to the end of the universe. Pardon? You should hear the way Tiff tells it. Humorously? <laughs> she tells about the end of the universe humorously? It could be a hangover from the cow tranquilizer talking, but this is all a bit much. You took a cow tranquilizer? That would explain why you were unconscious. I was sucker injected by Ken. He tranked me for the operation to take out the chip. That should have been a little local freezing. What? Why would he tranquilize me? What freaky stuff went down? I may have the explanation. I'd love to hear it. Ken and Priestess Jennifer have weak interpersonal skills and are a little stunted emotionally. Priestess Jennifer grew up on a planet where everyone communicated with each other through snippet exchanges on computers. And therefore, she was previously able to exercise complete control over what she put out. Actual face-to-face -face conversations, extended interactions, and random discourse can cause her to panic and make questionable choices. And dear Ken has interacted pretty much strictly with animals his entire life. He also panics when emotionally overwhelmed. There's a budding romance between the two of them. It is an awkward and stumbling affair, but I believe they are better people for the undertaking. 
Ken has expanded his areas of interest beyond animals, and this would be the first time Jennifer has loved unironically. Adorable. How does this wind up with getting me tranquilized? I will talk to Priestess Jennifer, but I strongly suspect it was in order for them to have some alone time together. Can't they visit each other whenever they want? They can, but they don't. There always needs to be an excuse. Because of all that, I got drugged instead of being asked to leave? Yes. Kind of romantic. Romantic? A little. What kind of dates do you go on? Given how hot I am, you'd think awesome ones, but mostly no. Maybe it is romantic in a totally sketchy way that I might be able to appreciate. Hmm, they wouldn't have done anything weird to me when I was passed out, would they? I mean, besides style of my hair? I can guarantee not. They are both standoffish with physical displays of affection and have led entirely asexual lives. I am positive they just talked. I feel honored to have been the reason for their date. And Jen runs about average on the loopy scale with us. Did I not say when we first met? Earlier today, by the way. We literally met today. Alexandra's being a little colorful. But we do all have our idiosyncrasies. What's yours? Words, for one. There are certain words that she feels are so overdone they should be removed from this language we are currently speaking, and which is remarkably spoken everywhere by everyone. Literally is one of those words. Oops. Sorry. If you really want to set her off, tell her this barbecue is a truly authentic experience. It'll be a hoot. But I warn you, she's as fast as a cobra and freakishly strong. I don't know what a cobra is, but there'll be no triggering from me. Triggering is another one. There are a few words. And some phrases that, through overuse, misuse, or marketing use, have come to irritate me. I bet you're feeling like you'd fit right in. It's rarely like a homecoming. You wouldn't want these ladies, your sisters from another mister, facing off against a leviathan avatar when it could have been prevented? Unfair. Blow the Invictus up. You don't need me for that. Let's not be rash. Please join us, Mr. Rice. The resolution may not be as simple as merely destroying the ship. First, it is straddling dimensions, and I'm not sure how the physics of an explosion would work in that situation. Second, if we could blow up the ship, we might actually free Leviathan in the process. And third, we'd be setting off an interdimensional explosion on a living planet. And the planet might not appreciate that. Not to mention the data. The men and women who crewed the Invictus risked their lives on scientific exploration for knowledge. We owe it to them to at least try to retrieve it. That's it. I'm calling cowpucks. Something stinks in here. You both have a raging heart on to get that data, and for the BGO to be the ones doing it. For scientific advancement! This is not about scientific advancement. There is something specific in that data you were hoping to find or hide. Otherwise, you'd let Fiddlehead get it. Don't be so conspiratorial! There are security protocols that she is not familiar with. I'm sure she could hack her way through, but that takes longer and could trigger some system reprisals. And yes, within the ship's mainframe, there are some BGO files, which would have been part of the setup in these circumstances, that are classified. Now that you've told me you don't want me near the files, I super duper want to see the files. In an office on Corfu. Well played. Lisa, how nice of you to visit. Well, don't just stand in the doorway, launching barbs. Come on in. Everything you've done has been to get to this point. Alone, in an office with you? You do think highly of yourself. This infamous rescuer would never have come for you. It was all part of this con job. I was never truly in jeopardy. My importance to the Jader is above Kufur's pay grade. But he signed off on my release. That's the essential part. He's the fall guy if things don't go as expected. Excuse me. Have at it, Dr. Kane. I've said what I came to say. I'm not on the crew roster. And good day to you, Dr. Kane. You seem to be expecting an explanation. I am. Being a total fraud, 
You are a waste of space, no matter where you are, but particularly so within the cozy quarters of this quaint little star hopper. I will ruin you. No, you won't. <laughs> Primarily because you'll be dead, but also because you lack credibility. You won't be missed. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Did you say that ironically? Book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 7. You seem shocked, dear Lisa. I assumed from the ball gag treatment that you knew of the enzymatic acidity of my saliva. You didn't know about it. You had just never seen it in action. During our little foray together, you will be introduced to a great many things you have never seen before. Some unpleasant. Such is the nature of a safari. <laughs> <laughs>